Oh great, it broke again. This Halo Mega set started off something spectacular, but wow, was it a rocky, rocky start. In its peak of popularity, Halo was trying everything. In early 2009, when Halo Wars was finally released, Halo Mega was born. Having made Lego copies, Megablox was looking to prove something different about their unique building style with minifigures that were posable and much more like action figures. Unfortunately, then Megablox still had poor quality when compared to its competitor Lego, and Halo suffered the same fate. So with this Warthog being one of the starting three sets, how bad really was it? This set included Halo Mega's first design at a Covenant turret. Part Quality aside, unfortunately, this thing didn't stay together due to the beams at the very end. The base was one giant piece with swivel pieces up top to make sure that this thing could spin in a 360 degrees. The entire shielded front piece was held up with one clip piece, which unfortunately would wear over time. And at certain angles, it would be unable to hold itself up. However, this one seems to be in fair condition, holding itself up in most places. However, it wouldn't pass QC today. Unfortunately, the biggest issue with this turret is how fragile it was. The blue plasma sticks would often fall off very easily and were only clipped on with one stud. And when you try to put them on, this happens. I didn't even try to do that. Fortunately, we do have a seat for a minifigure on this turret, and we do get one Elite to come with it. This is the only Elite that came out that year, so this was a special set in that regard. However, unfortunately, I'd say the turret just didn't cut it. But as the naming of the set implies, we really are here for the Warthog. So how good is it? Or how bad? Thankfully, the Warthog itself has some pretty good shaping. It includes a turret and two minifigs to really fill this thing out. However, at the front, it suffers from clear stickers that cover multiple pieces and some that just won't stick together. The stickers on the set, while maybe adding some cool damage detail, ultimately fall flat as they look kind of cheap and they don't look great when they're covering more than one piece. I do appreciate, however, the hooks they used at the front of this Warthog. I don't think Megas ever used those hooks again, and they look really nice here. I wish they would bring us back to those. They are attached with two hooks at the front of the Warthog. They are somewhat flimsy at times, but ultimately look pretty good and stay on for the most part. You can even pull the Warthog with them, and nothing will break. I do appreciate the wheels at the front that look pretty good, despite not technically being accurate with the hole in the middle, but everything else looks great and they spin perfectly. It might be funny to say, but I think Mega has done rolling better than LEGO, including suspension. Speaking of suspension, in terms of actual suspension design, this is probably the weakest that Mega has ever done. While it works fine, it just doesn't have the same feeling as the rest of the suspension does in their other Warthogs. It works well enough, but really these wheels are just flopping around. No, seriously, they're actually just flopping. Mega doesn't use any special pieces here like they usually do for their suspension. The actual cabin of the Warthog is actually pretty nice, and the windscreen piece they use here is the only time they've ever used this. For a first rendition of this thing, they created a pretty good shape, despite having a limited parts library. We still do get to have fun in the driver's seat with a wheel that spins around 360 degrees, and of course, a perfect place for a minifigure. There is no chair in there, so the Spartan kind of just slots in, but he fits their pretty well and can put his hands towards the wheel. There is a nice little console in the middle as well for the minifigures to hang around with. Of course, the other side can fit minifigures too. It's pretty rudimentary this go around, but the figures do have a step on the driver's side and the passenger sides too. Behind them, we have the back of the Warthog that has a couple more stickers with decent shaping and pieces that can easily fall off. That also includes the Warthog turret, which is arguably one of the most iconic things about a Warthog, and it is extremely hard to fit figures on this thing. Unfortunately, this turret only has two connection points, so as soon as you try to put a figure on, you'll notice that the turret has come off. It will detach from the Warthog, as well as the actual barrel piece will detach from the turret itself, and can be kind of difficult to put back on for whatever reason. The biggest flaw with this, I think, is the size. The turret simply can't stand up the way it's supposed to be and have the figure attached to it at the same time. The figure's just too small for it. Other fun parts of the set include a random fire hydrant sticker and tail lights that are stickers instead of pieces. You can tell why this is a bad idea. Unfortunately, the Warthog also has a problem staying together. There will often be gaps in pieces for no reason, and pressing down on it slightly will push pieces out of place. Unfortunately, the first impression for many with Halo Mega was this part quality. For many, they gave up as soon as they saw this, and it's unfortunate because now it's much better. But of course, the best part about any Halo Mega set is always the minifigures, and these ones don't disappoint. At least they didn't over 15 years ago. An Elite and two Spartans, that's it. No names, no nothing, just an Elite and two generic Spartans. But they actually looked pretty good. The Elite came with our first binary rifle, and this mold hasn't changed since, at least for the Halo 2 and Halo 3 variants. Putting away the LEGO versus Mega minifigure argument, these figures were actually very good for their time, and they had great molding with good detail. The Elite was fairly accurate to what we saw in game, with molded shoulders all the way down to the hands and feet. Of course, these hands are human 
human hands, which technically shouldn't be here. One interesting thing to note is that the elites from a long time ago didn't come with peg holes, so there was no way to store this weapon anywhere, but it wasn't something that you would really necessarily want to do anyway. The Spartans here, I'd say, are the stars of the show. This is when really Mega kicked it off with fantastic molding for these chest plates and the legs, the helmet and the coloring all looks really good, and they have the details just in the right place. The shoulder armor and the arms are a breath of fresh air, especially in the time when these came out. The detail and the depth that we get in these is beyond Lego even today. Thankfully with these Spartans, we do get a peg hole in the back, which we can shove anything in. Hopefully just a weapon, but if you stick crayons in there, that's okay too. The original Halo Mega weapons were also ginormous. This SMG is like five times the size that it's supposed to be. It's, it's funny how big these actually are. So for a set that's 15 years old, this isn't all that terrible. There's some really great features in this thing, and it's kind of fun to play around with. It just really needed to stay together better. This was my first and only Halo set for years. Being a LEGO Star Wars fan, seeing the part quality like this, I just didn't want to buy another one, especially when most of it broke and ended up in a bin for a really long time. I must say though, I'm glad that I gave Halo Mega another chance, and I think you should too if you haven't. It's a lot better than you might expect, and unlike LEGO, Mega has been actively listening to fans for years, and they really want to improve and give us the best product possible, even if sometimes they slip up. The parts quality today is definitely miles better than what it was 15 years ago. But unfortunately, most people who hate Halo Mega hate it because they experience the sets like this. The sets that break by touching it. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and tell me what you think I should review next, both Halo or Star Wars or anything else. Thanks for watching. Please join the channel as a membership. It will be huge help to me and you'll get some exclusive perks too. Peace.